All right, guys, uh, welcome back once again uh, to this week's course uh, session on the local church. I uh, hope you all are doing well. Hope you all are able to learn something from the course, at least with what we've covered so far. Uh, just before we continue, uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, encourage us from doing is, uh, so I know everybody has the course material, right? We all have the PDF and whatnot. Uh, and I'm sure you're highlighting it, um, you know, whichever stands out. All that is great, but I would also encourage you to, uh, whichever point kind of stands out, you can have a separate document per se to just copy and paste these pointers. Um, so, uh, I mean, that way, when you want to refer back to something on, on this very specific subject, uh, you don't have to go through it all, you know, 250 pages of this PDF to see, okay, where was that point? Where was the point? Um, that kind of uh, is, will help you in the long run. So yeah, I think you can do that with all the subjects that has, that's very deep in content. Uh, I think this course is pretty deep in content. Um, yeah, so cool. Uh, so let's just uh, do a quick uh, recap of chapter three. Uh, what we've covered uh, in the last classes. Okay, we we went we covered through the entire um, section of chapter three, that is the government and the structure of the local church. Uh, a governing thing is simply is understood as you know they ought to take care of something, right? So that's what it is. And uh, we very briefly uh, and also in depth actually, we saw how the first local church uh, you know were governed, and we see uh, from the first century church, which was born on the day of Pentecost, uh, and from the time 120 people were filled with bapt uh, bapt filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, we see how the church kept growing, and as uh, the scripture says, every day God kept adding new people to the church. And, uh, and it's not until Acts chapter 6 where we see that the deacons were being added. Uh, but until then, it was the apostles who took care of everything, even though there were thousands of people uh, being added to the church. Um, it, it took them a feedback, uh, so to say, uh, for them to come up with this idea that I think we need, uh, you know, deacons. Uh, basically, the we saw the word deacon comes from the Greek word diakonos, which means a helper, a servant, attendant, etc. And after deacons, we saw, and as the church kept growing, uh, we saw elders being added uh, to the church. Uh, right, and that's in approximately Acts chapter 11. Uh, now, as the churches were growing, the Christian, there were new people from a different background of faith being added to the church. So, and uh, like I mentioned, that the term or the word elders was being chosen for a certain group of people who were old in age but new in faith or young in faith, right? Um, okay, so, so for example, like a 60 year old person uh, getting to know about Jesus, uh, he's an elder. Uh, and so, you know, but then he's very young in faith. So um, people of that sort were added to the team. And then, uh, and we see that they were all, they were part of one team. They functioned as a one team, apostles, uh, apostles, deacons, elders. They were, uh, they were united, um, right? So a lot of things we covered in, in chapter three and different types of churches, the house church, uh, local church, the the cell church, the elder system, um, uh, the independent, the clerical systems. And so we went through a different systems of churches, uh, mega churches, multi-site churches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but in conclusion, we saw that uh, you know whatever, regardless of the structure or affiliation of local churches, um, what is important uh, is that. Uh, we continue to preach, uh, you know, Christ crucified. Um, you know, we we gauge, uh, we ask this question: Are they truly part of God's kingdom and walking in Him, regardless of uh, the system that they are following, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Uh, and and that's what we we are called to encourage each other as well. And knowing that, okay, the church is God's idea. Uh, we are to follow His blueprint, not our own ways, not not do whatever we we feel like doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was like a quick recap, a summary of chapter three. Uh, and uh, uh, does anybody have any questions regarding the church or whatever we've covered so far, or not necessarily what we've covered, but then 
Um, yeah. Anything? Speak now or for <laughs> I have all your piece. Just kidding. Okay, um, so yeah, if there are no questions to start off, we will now uh, go into chapter four. It's in page 28 of your PDF, uh, The House of God. So chapter four is titled uh, Stages of Growth and Development. Okay, so in this chapter, we are going to just look at uh, one, how the, the early church grew uh, and in maturity and, and also in number. And uh, and how they were developed, and how we are to develop uh, the local church. Okay, so that's what this chapter is um, going to cover. Okay, so uh, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word growth? Growth. Growth in number. Okay. Yeah. Growth in number. Okay. Yeah. Growth generally is increase. When something increased, it says growing. Okay, increase. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, Isaac, you were saying something. I said growth generally refers to increase. Increase, okay. Yeah, when we look at the point of increase, when something increases, we say it's growing. Even when a child right. is growing, they say it's increasing. Right. Thank right. you. Thanks, Isaac. Uh, Lubega, were you saying something? Yeah. <coughs> Yes, Pastor. To me, I think uh, growth might mean in the number of individuals, at the same time in number of mm -hmm. your presence in areas. Maybe it might mean, let me give an example. Right. If I have 100 members, and uh, maybe by God's grace they become 200, that's growth in number of individuals. And right. if I have one church, right. say... And then God blesses us and we open up branches in this and that area. I, can, I also call right. that one growth. Thank you, Pastor. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Bega. Thank you for sharing that, guys. Yeah, what else? What else comes to your mind when you hear the word growth, uh, you know, in, to be in general? Yeah, feel free to unmute and speak. Um, maybe when we start having branches in churches, that's a real growth as you have a lot of branches that start reaching a lot of people. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Spiritual growth of uh, individuals. Spiritual growth of individuals. Okay. Yeah. Spiritual growth. Okay. What else? Georgia, Zelatoli, Roslyn, Anita. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, even I would like to say about um, growth spiritually um, from baby Christians to mature mm -hmm. Christians. Right. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. JP, are you seeing something? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, oh, that's fine. Multiplication of church members, yeah. Okay, uh, I, I still want to hear some more. Uh, <laughs> uh, Georgia, uh, any, anybody else? Paul, Leah, Crazy. Talk to me, guys. Growth, it's, it's yeah. really not, uh, yeah. Can I say something again? Sure, Isaac, yeah. Yeah, like the uh, bigger said of someone said, it can be also growth can be also identified in the quality or the substance of the knowledge gained in something. Like for example, when the church started in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the quality, the zeal of the early members of the early church increased. So that's right. why they were able to improve their spirit and got the zeal to establish 
and increase in number as growth. Thanks, Isaac. Thank you. Okay, just one more person. One more. One more. I right, guess yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Who uh, shared? Um, appreciate all your answers, your responses. Um, yeah, and it's, as in any time I ask a question, it's it's not that there is a right answer or a wrong answer. It's just that you know we are all different people. We have different perspective, uh, different experiences, uh, exposure. Uh, and now we have Sid. Okay, Sid. Yeah, Sid, I saw you raising your hand. Do you have a question or is there something to add? Or was that by mistake? A pastor growth is also expansion. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Russell. Growth is also expansion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of things comes to mind, right? When you think of growth, uh, anything. I mean, the first natural thing is uh, the a human life, you know, from uh, from just a, a dot of a cell to you know how the baby in the womb grows, and then the, you know baby uh, is born, and then the toddler stage, the 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 teenager stage, the youth stage, you know, the uh, young adults, the adults, it goes on. So that's that's growth, right? We grow uh, physically, and also um, that's that for me when I think of growth, it's 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 something about it, it's it's so deeply uh, you know rooted in God's uh, view of life uh, as in everything about him is growth uh, you know everything uh, you know like the physical growth and then he wants us to grow spiritually uh, you know and in every little things that we do when we work out our muscles grow that is also growth <laughs> isn't it uh, and how many of you put your money in, uh, you know, in investment mutual funds or stocks or whatever? Why do they do that? So that their money grows, you know. Um, and prosperity is as another part of growth as well. You know, God blesses us; you prosper. So you've grown in uh, in uh, in blessings, in wealth, and because it's it's a good thing, isn't it? So that's all that all of that is growth. And like most of you also shared is. Um, with, with now with the context of what we've been talking about in terms of uh, the church the local church um, the church also grew isn't it um so we're going to do do a very quick case study of uh, the two churches we're going to go point by point but before that uh, since we've been talking so much from the book of acts right uh, uh, i thought it'd be like interesting uh, at least for me um, just to have like a timeline uh, of uh, every, you know what happened when because uh, I'm more of a visual person like, I, I learn a little better when I actually see things so uh, let, me, let me just share this tab and see if it helps you guys also in some way um, as an overview okay this is just an overview for our understanding so yeah as you can see okay Cool. So uh, Acts chapter one. I mean, so it, it was written about thirty A.D. Um, so and you see everything that is happening. In Acts chapter two, uh, the day of Pentecost and whatnot. By Acts chapter three, we are here one year later. Um, what happens? Uh, interesting. Peter heals a crippled man in temple. Uh, Thirty-two, thirty-three Acts. This is the year 32 and 33 Acts 4 to chapter 5. It's amazing how much of uh, how many things have happened in two years and it's just put in condensed into like less than a chapter and a half. Joseph Barnabas sells a field to give, and then chapter uh, the year 33 and 34. Oh, this, by the way, is year okay. Let's go back here. Okay, so you see this thing here, it's year 30. So um, it gets interesting from here, 33, 34, Acts chapter 6, verse 1 and 7. The number of disciples was increasing, 
there's a growth happening right uh, seven men who are full of the spirit chosen as deacons remember that we just what we covered last class uh, and then from year 34 um, hero arrives <laughs> uh Saul uh arrives right to Jerusalem uh and it's it's like the beginning of the persecution stage uh, from verse 8 onwards and all the way to 8 chapter 8 verse 40 uh you know Saul arrives in Jerusalem because there were people in Jerusalem it's very interesting um you know one of the that Jesus said to, to the disciples wait till you're filled with the holy spirit right um on the day of pentecost and it's very interesting to see that even after the day of pentecost uh, they had not really gone out this is and that is what almost uh six to seven years later they were still and uh what caused the scattering so the season of scattering as they called it okay, from acts chapter six uh, uh the persecution caused that um right so it, you come down and I, I mean, I'm just going to skim through this thing. Uh, and if you want it, you can let me know. I'll share this PDF with you. Um, the period of organized mission from Acts chapter 12. So cool, isn't it? Uh, with the maps and whatnot. See, the, the first church after the church of Jerusalem is Antioch. Right? You see where Antioch is. Um, Asia, Galatia. Right. So this is 47. Remember, we started uh, in the year 30. And by Acts 13, just 13 chapters later, we are already in the year 47. So 17 years has gone by already. Acts 14, 15. OK, so what's happening here? Paul revisits the uh, cities uh, he had been, returns to Antioch, uh, Syria. It's talking more about Paul now. Um, so you, you talk about the growth of the church. Uh, it's phenomenal, isn't it? By Acts chapter 15, by 15 years later, you see how much of the church has expanded and uh, mission strips happening, uh, new local church being planted, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So. Well, we've come to year 57. Um, it's still happening. The church is still growing. Paul arrives in Jerusalem, meets with James and elders in Jerusalem to tell them what God has done among the Gentiles. Uh, okay. Acts 28, last chapter of the book of Acts, 62, it's almost 32 years. So, uh, what you're reading when you read the book of Acts, all the 28 chapters, is you, you're reading the stories of people. Uh, you're reading the story, the history of the church, uh, the 32 years of their life being condensed to 28 chapters. Um, and, it, and it's just remarkable. I think this is just understanding the timeline kind of gives you, uh, sets a different perspective uh, to the way you would uh, approach reading the Book of Acts. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, this is helpful for me because I understand history, okay, and this is how it happens. And now I have a visual and um and uh you know helps me study a little differently so um yeah yeah sure sure i'll i'll share the pdf i'll put it on the stream section once the class is done enjoy it okay uh, where were we now okay all right okay chapter four <laughs> uh great so uh let's do a quick uh, this is a summary of a case study of the church uh, of the jerusalem church the first uh church okay so i'm gonna go point after point and i feel like it's really important for us to do that even though it may see seem a little redundant um, um just you know stay with me here as we go point for point okay so uh the case study the jerusalem church i was born during um the feast of pentecost started in a powerful way grew very quickly through signs and wonders focus was on small group meetings in houses and they also met together in in the temple okay they had small groups and they also had uh you know temple so all of this is key points guys um, everything in the church was initially handled by the apostles everything right even though there were thousands in the local church deacons were uh, appointed later right that means 
until we don't read we read about deacons until chapter six acts chapter six like what we just saw to handle food administration uh these deacons also were strong in the spirit of food administration i think that's, that's a cool way to uh you know uh if you want you're know, hiring people not hiring asking volunteers for your church to come and uh be part of the food serving team it's like hey do you want to be part of the food administrative team it sounds makes its own very posh and cool all of a sudden isn't it <laughs> it's like wow yeah i want to be part of that all right um and uh so after that we see the multiplication came about because of persecution like you know like we saw on the timeline uh, from it's from acts chapter 6 verse 8 onwards from the time saul arrives to jerusalem to inspect to kind of analyze what's been happening uh, what's this new faith that uh you know this news that's being spread about this jesus uh and he was born again you know he was rose from the dead who are these christians so he comes in and then you know the persecution kind of uh take goes to a new level uh you know stephen gets stoned uh you know, stephen debates with the jews um saul uh, he, he's just unleashing persecution on the christians so he's going from town to town and dragging them out of their houses putting them in jail even being killed um so multiplication came about because of persecution Okay. Uh, initially, the apostles remained in Jerusalem, although other believers and the deacons dispersed. Uh, the original founding members of the church, they remained in Jerusalem. They did not go much on mission trip uh, until much later. Okay. Uh, some of the expansion was directly orchestrated by uh, the Holy Spirit. That is very key. Okay. Some of the expansion. Uh, Rosalind said growth is also expansion, isn't it? Um, so some of the growth, in other words, was directly orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. Uh, how much more do we need to pray for growth and expansion in our churches, right? Um, after some years, the Jerusalem church had elders who were part of the leadership. Um, you know, we know the whole story of that. Prophet prophetic ministry teams were sent from the Jerusalem church to minister at other locations. So now mission strip is happening. A prophetic ministry teams were sent, seemed to cope well with the rapid growth initially. Uh, they used small group meetings effectively. Um, here's a point that I feel like it's very important. Maintained a good balance between mighty manifestations and strong teaching to establish believers. Um, right? Uh, how many churches can we think of today that has that that really good balance of the signs and wonders uh, of you know that's going pursuing um the, the mighty manifestations and also sound a uh, doctrine and theology uh, we need a lot of churches that has this um, balance isn't it so the church of jerusalem had this beautiful balance um they were following they were seeing signs and wonders you know sick being healed and whatnot but then also uh, emphasis on uh, the teaching of the word right uh, established a song a strong sense of community um, and sharing of things okay. established a, so a strong sense of community um, that means should our churches also uh, kind of emulate that should should it show a strong sense of community or does your church show that it like it has a strong sense of community if it does not what are you going to do about it okay it's some of the pointers as we do this case study it's also to ask you know um, yourself these questions uh, as well uh, resolved internal conflicts well um, wow <laughs> uh, resolving conflicts is one thing if those conflicts ended well or not well is another thing but seem to have done it again. It's like, yeah, pretty good church, huh? This church resolved internal conflicts well. Um, sorry, I'm laughing. I just, you know, just seen too many things. <laughs> Apostles uh, remained in Jerusalem to keep the primary base strong. Uh, apostles and elders resolved doctrinal issues well. It's another beautiful thing. Okay, that means there was doctrinal issues. That's one thing like just like any other church or any people you know there were issues it's not like they were perfect the founding fathers or members of the early church we clearly know that uh, but when they when they were confronted with the issues that they disagreed upon 
they just did not put it under the rug or ignore it. Uh, that's one thing they could have done. Or the other thing is they could have just bantered each other, saying, OK, you are wrong. I am right. You have to follow this, blah, blah, blah. And But instead, they chose to handle it like adults. You know, like ideally, like how adults should uh, handle things is when they are confronted with something that they're disagreeing on, OK, well, sit down, you know, just get a cup of tea, uh, you know, big bread and hummus or whatever, and let's just discuss about it. Uh, uh, and they sorted it, uh, and they sorted the issues well. Uh, seemed a little slow to raise up second and third lines of leadership, uh, perhaps too, fo uh, too focused on key leadership. Um, yeah. Apostles did not seem to get involved with new churches directly. Uh, they would send out you know, deacons and um, elders and missions team. So that is a very quick uh, case study of the Church of Jerusalem and how they were set, uh, the challenges they had, just you know, in their own way. Right? Um, any thoughts, guys? Anything that you want to share that you observe that kind of stood out to you? Uh, like some of the points stood out to me. I wonder how the apostles uh, take took care of everything. <laughs> took care of, yeah, yeah. A large group, uh, it's hard, yeah. Yeah. but I wonder how they did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is crazy, isn't it? Uh, so it took them uh, till chapter six, that is like at least two, three or three or four years um, in the timeline. And uh, I mean, if you, if you've organized camps or whatever meetings, you know uh, the administrative planning that goes on behind that. Uh, just planning a youth camp for 130 people, 50 people is like, <laughs> all right, when is this three days of camp finishing types? You know? But uh, yeah, just to know that it's had a lot of grace and wisdom. And yeah, anything else, guys? Uh, yes, can I say something? Yes, I think sure. Yeah, um, this um, the administration and uh, the uh, Jerusalem church, I think there is right. much we can learn for our local churches today. Because right. um, what I'm seeing for now mm -hmm. in our local churches, especially young pastors when they are ordained, instead right. of working, working together in one accord, most of them are at each other's truth. One is trying to supersede another. I think mm -hmm. in the process, they are not planting the seed for better growth in the church because it's like they are trying to uh, portray or pursue their own image. Mm -hmm. And think, uh, one of the things we can learn from this uh, Jerusalem church is how to handle right. this kind of situation when it exists in our right. church. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Man. Thanks, Isaac. Thank you. Sure. Hi, Paul. Uh, are you trying to uh, share as well? Okay. Anything else, uh, anybody, uh, before we move on? To... As we discussed about serving food, the, the, the part of food administration, I think it was like an interview, just in our spirit field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, um, so I'm not going to reveal the name, obviously, but uh, I know this, uh, I have this friend of mine. Uh, so he was in my team, uh, core team. Uh, with the youth so uh he uh so an, an, an alliance came where he was going to meet this you know going to get married to this girl and whatnot so meeting her for the first time and whatnot. so the first thing that he asks her uh, or the second thing is like do you speak in tongues i'm like dude okay that's the pastor right there <laughs> uh, and, uh, and like yeah well yeah, i man was on fire but anyways uh that's cool that's cool okay all right let's move to the second page up so page 29 to the next section um 
we'll do another quick uh, case study on the Church of Antioch. Okay, the Church of Antioch. So, started by believers who were scattered from uh, Jerusalem due to persecution. Um, established through supernatural demonstrations, received the leader Barnabas, sent from Jerusalem to strengthen them. Okay, to strengthen them. Uh, Barnabas became the first pastor of the church in Antioch. Okay, uh, you remember the uh, the progression of, of uh, the growth of the government uh, and the structure in, in the church, right? So from the deacons to the elders, uh, you know, the, and like the elders were uh, like a group of people who were taking care of the of the church, and then the, the, they felt the need that it's better to have one person. Uh, Know, who's like an overseer of the entire church and then uh, everybody else would come under the supervision um, of these over uh, of this overseer like the deacons and elders and whatnot right uh, and I think I'm, I'm not I'm just guessing but it is possible that you know that they would have seen how the uh, Let's say, for example, uh, David's tabernacle, how it was organized. And when you read First Chronicles chapter twenty-five, uh, it's pretty interesting. First Chronicles chapter twenty-five. Uh, I mean, I might read this a lot even, even next year for you guys. But then, okay, let me just, if you can, just go to First Chronicles twenty-five. It's it's pretty neat how it was, how David kind of organized this whole thing. Yeah. Okay. If, uh, if you're there, First Chronicles chapter twenty-five, uh, verse two, it says, uh, First Chronicles chapter twenty-five, verse two. Uh, it has a bunch of names from the sons of Asaph, uh, Zakur, Joseph, and Nathaniah, uh, Asarela. The sons of Asaph were under the supervision of Asaph, who prophesied under the king's supervision okay so there are these bunch of uh, guys under the supervision of uh, asaph and then asaph was under the supervision of uh, the king and then as of jerithan and his list of sons it says the same thing under the supervision of their father jerithan uh, who prophesied using the harp in thanking and praising the lord and then you have the son of heman from his sons uh, all a bunch of names and all these were sons of heman the king's seer Okay, let's come down to verse 6, First Chronicles 25, 6. It says, all these men, okay, all these men were under the supervision of their fathers for the music of the temple of the Lord with cymbals, lyres, and harps for the ministry at the house of God. Okay, church, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? At the house of God. Asaph, Jerithan, and He-man, He-man, okay, were under the supervision of the king. Okay, so interesting. We see the house of God, the tabernacle of David is referred to the house of God, like what we are talking about. And, uh, and their worship ministry is, that's when we're going to actually talk about it next year, next semester at least, is, um, but you're kind of getting a, a sneak peek of it. Is it is organized pretty much the same way like how we are looking at it, it's just that we have Greek words in the New Testament, okay? deacons and elders and whatnot. Right, um, so it's pretty cool the way it's uh, organized, uh, and I'm sure they they would have had something to learn from uh, the Old Testament, and whatnot. Okay, uh, point four in the case study of the Church of Antioch is uh, Barnabas welcomed another leader who steps into the scene, Paul. Okay, brought in by Barnabas. Okay, to strengthen them, Barnabas brings him in. Okay, that's a very important point to note. Okay, new believers were discipled through teaching. Okay, they were equipped, they were empowered, they were discipled. Okay, uh, identified with Christ. Believers were first called Christians in Antioch. So until then, they were called as believers. Okay, uh, believe, they were first called Christians in Antioch. Um, and then received prophetic ministry. Remember, in the previous uh, church case study that we did, uh, prophetic ministry teams went out. It's what it says, right? Uh, and now here, here we see in uh, Agabus, a person, uh, a, 
and you'll read it in Acts chapter 21, verse 10. Uh, he was a prophet from Judea. That's what the verse says, Acts 21, 10. You see that he, he was a person who was functioning in the office of a prophet, okay, the, the fivefold ministry. So he was a prophet. They allowed other ministries to come into the church and impart uh, into the life of the church. Uh, they were involved in social work. Uh, this church, uh, which was born after the persecution after the church of Jerusalem, uh, these guys were sending relief to their mother church, so to speak, okay, like to uh, their senior church or whatever. Okay, when the church in Jerusalem uh, were in need, uh, the church in Antioch uh, sent them uh, a relief, okay, and you can read all about it in Acts chapter 11, 28, 29 uh, onwards. Acts 11, 28, 29, yeah. Uh, they saw the emergence of more leaders and development minist of ministry teams in two years. Okay, they saw the emergence. Uh, I'd like to think that uh, emergence also was another alternative word for growth, right? They saw the emergence of more leaders and development growth of ministry teams in about two years. Um, it, leaders were in fellowship with one another and ministered to the Lord. They were involved in missions, sent out apostolic teams uh, to pioneer new churches. Okay, uh, remember that word pioneer. Okay, uh, we're going to look at that a little later. They were involved in missions. They sent out apostolic teams. So they're pretty much doing what initially happened with the first church. Okay, the Church of Jerusalem. Um, uh, the founding members did not go on ministry team uh, mission trip, but everybody else were involved mission trip, uh, and they sent out uh, apostolic teams, prophetic teams, and whatnot. And the same pattern is being followed by the church in Antioch. Uh, became an apostolic mission base for apostles and prophets. Okay, you, you know what a base is, right? It's it's the place from where you know everything goes out and comes. Uh, that's where you come to get restored, uh, you know, reformed, refreshed, whatnot. That's what a base is. It's so good to see uh, that the, the second church, the church in Antioch, was the base. It was an apostolic mission base uh, for apostles and prophets and missionary teams. Uh, if they wanted to go anywhere else, it's like they would come here first and then they would, you know, kind of go out. Um, it's so wonderful to see a church being so uh, effective uh, that way, isn't it? Uh, but it's all not uh, flowers and roses. Um, and the last point says the disagreement between the two key leaders, Paul and Barnabas, caused these leaders not only to part company, but perhaps even distance themselves uh, from the Antioch church. Uh, we did not. We do not. We do not hear uh, of them returning for any length of time to Antioch until Paul visits much later in Acts 18. Okay. Now again, notice the the reference is Acts 18, but the issue, uh, the disagreement is in Acts 15. Now for us, when we look at it, it's just three chapters. But there's a quite a lot of time gap between those three chapters. Okay, uh, that's it's very that that's why in having a timeline uh, kind of makes sense. Okay, um, the church seemed to have continued, but without its two main leaders. Uh, remember, Barnabas was their first pastor. Okay, uh, not much is mentioned about the Antioch church after that. Um, yeah, I mean that's it's a sad ending, so to say. Uh, but the church kept going. I mean, they kept doing what uh, what they were, uh, what they should be doing. Okay. So even though the Bible just doesn't say much about what happened between Paul and Barnabas after, um, yeah. Well, I hope it ended well for them. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's the uh, case study of the Church of Antioch. Um, anything else uh, from this case study that stands out? What is your key takeaway from you know? This summary of their case study. Any key point that stood out to you from this case study?
Yes, uh, Labega, please go ahead. Mine is the first one, Pastor. What do you think? Your voice is breaking, Labega. Sorry. No, there's still a lot of static. Uh, okay, let me try again. Yeah. Yeah, it's better now. Am I now clear? Yes. Okay, my question was, or is still, why do you think are the reasons behind the disappearance of the Antioch church as they continue writing the scriptures? Uh, I mean, like I mentioned, I I mean, the scriptures don't doesn't speak a lot more about the church after, and uh, I quite honestly don't know uh, of the church Antioch. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't have a better answer, Lubega, but it's what. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, anything else? Any other key takeaways for you? I mean, something that stood out, a significant point of this case study. Um, I liked how they went on mission trips without yeah. staying in one place. And in the process, they stayed in Jerusalem, but they, came to, they, they wanted to reach people. I yeah. And can you also explain about that prophetic ministry? I didn't get that point. Prophetic ministry? Okay, yeah, so you know, this uh, name mentioned there, Agabus, is the name of a person uh, who was a prophet from Judea. It's uh, written about him in Acts chapter 21, verse 10. Uh, you know, so he was a prophet from Jerusalem. Uh, and when you read that scripture, it says uh, that he was a prophet from Judea, right? That is, uh, so he went there, uh, like, you know, as a mission strip. Uh, as well to minister to the church uh, in prophetic ministry because he was the person who was functioning in the office of a prophet like the, like the fivefold ministry that we talk about right yeah thank you Pastor. yeah you're welcome okay, anything else guys um yes yes pastor yeah, my my take is um, the organization mm -hmm. here in the church from Jerusalem, as we have we've explained about Antioch, that the, right. the organization and the unity was right. one of the paramount bases for the growth. And I yeah. think uh, that can be taken and implied into our churches for today. Because yeah. if we are well, if we are well organized, there is strength yeah. in unity. So that's yeah. my take. This, yeah, thank you, Pastor. That's my take. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you. You know, uh, also the Lubega's question is keeping me, uh, making me think. As in, would the story would have ended any differently if uh, Paul and Barnabas had uh, sorted their issues out there in the church? Um, like, as in what tells me something is your ministry is important but uh relationships are in my opinion are more important because uh ministries ministry ministries are built on relationships isn't it um so and i think going an extra mile to resolve conflict in relationships uh is good for the ministry and also people involved in the ministry and the people that you're taking care of or under your uh, supervision. I think that uh, that was one of the key things because I mean I was thinking about it when you know preparing for it as well. Because, but another thing is the point that says they saw the emergence of more leaders. Um, you know that we'll talk about more uh, a little later. So more leaders were emerging that means there was growth happening and anytime i think uh you know there are more leaders being emerged in a church that means a church is growing a ministry is growing um that's that's my perspective my opinion right so can i can i add a little bit of that yes please yeah this this is like a still another factor for for growth Though, of course, 
looking at it from another perspective, maybe the elders should have resolved the issue between Barnabas and Paul. But um, when you think about dispersal of uh, seeds, when the seeds are scattered, they grow again in different places. So like you are saying, new leaders we are growing, so the older ones should go out elsewhere <laughs> and, and, and grow better. Thank you. That's my thing. Thanks, Isaac. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll pause here and uh, we'll take a break and uh, we'll resume um, after the break. Okay. Thanks. Enjoy your break.